This is going to be so casual, I've made myself a coffee and brought it up with me. <laughs> Sorry? No, she'll learn. <laughs> Sorry, I just didn't think. So, <clears throat> this should be the normal bit where we do a sermon, where I'm standing up here boring you all to tears for half an hour, but that's not going to happen today. What we thought was, uh, Helen and Mark, uh, this is their first full Sunday with us, and we thought we'd learn a bit more about them. Um, and Helen suggested doing it in a bit of a question and answer session. Um, she said, not like Graham Norton, where they've got one of those chairs that we can eject you from. I don't want to flip backwards on a chair when you get bored of me, but then maybe we should initiate that for sermons on Sundays, James. I don't, I think, I, I don't think I'd last very long. <laughs> I think I, I wouldn't get beyond hello. Um, so we just, yeah, and Andy's already worked out how to pull the, pull the lever. Um, so we just thought we'd have a bit of a chat and uh, just give you a bit of an insight into Helen and Mark and who they are and uh, the people who are going to be leading our church. And, and at the end of the day, it is a first for our church as well, let's be honest, that uh, it'd be nice if there was a time when it wasn't a thing, but let's address it. It's the first time we've had a lady in charge of our church. Um, and it's the first time that a man has been the vicar's wife. Yeah. So uh, let's start with some quick fun. In fairness, Mark, it took me six months to work out that. Six months of me standing up here talking to myself, but there you go. <laughs> Some quick fire questions. Curry or Chinese? Chinese. Uh, Chindian, uh, oh. please. So that's um, a Chinese starters and Indian main course. Oh. Marvellous. Um, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, for me, a teacher. Yeah. A PE teacher. I've got the figure for it already, <laughs> haven't I? <laughs> I sh maybe I should have been PE teacher. I wanted to be. Yeah. I wanted to be a pilot. Good know. I haven't decided what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite movie? The Holiday. Yeah. Yeah, every Christmas, me and the girls watch The Holiday. Yeah. Uh, Pale Rider or Star Wars? Pale Rider and Clint Eastwood. 1986. No, I prefer yours. My wife likes yours, Helen. I, I'm not so keen. But there you go. First car. Morris Marina. Bright orange. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Always find it in a car park. I love the fact that you could have said, Jesus loves you, and Andy wouldn't have clapped as hard as he did for a Morris <laughs> Marina. <laughs> cool. Mine was, a, I think, a white mini metro that was my mum's, and I used to cover the rust with Tipex. Uh, and then it was one that Trevor's family gave me uh, or to borrow, yep. I think. And then I bought one off Mr. Amsty, Christine's dad, yep. in the early years. So that was the first one I properly paid for, I think. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, your favourite music or artist? Anything from Tina Turner, God rest her soul, uh, Tina Turner to, I don't know, Casting Crowns and uh, everything and anything, really. A bit of everything. Um, Eric Clapton, Phil Collins, Mercy Me, listening to that at the moment. Yeah, good stuff. Ed Sheeran goes around our house. Ed Sheeran all the time for a long time, wasn't it? On a ukulele, Castle on a Hill. Oh my yeah. lord, I nearly smashed that ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's all right. Uh, how did you two meet? Oh. oh, we laugh about this. So we always say that we, we found each other on eBay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, a, a dating site, Christian Mingle, was where yeah. we met. Yeah. It's difficult when you're in ministry to date anybody. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we had a bit of a laugh about it, me and a friend of mine. Uh, we didn't, you know, we, yeah, it was just, it was hilarious. It was better than the telly for a while. Um, and then we just didn't do anything, didn't go on it for ages. And, I think you just signed up and given your 30 quid in for three months. Three months I paid for. Yeah, and, and, uh, and that, was, that was it, yeah. 
I think my oldest daughter said, Dad, come on, you've got you've to try and get out, get out there again. So it's her fault, really. Yeah. So when you were singles and you decided to mingle, thank you. Um, was it love at first sight? Yes. No. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't looking for a wife. I was looking for a friend. I was looking for someone to go to the pub with and so. go out for a meal and look, yeah. go and watch a movie. Yeah, and that's what you didn't get. You got a wife instead. So, but for me, you know, when you, have you seen the Vicar of Dibley? When she, when the guy sort of asked her to marry he, her or something, and she goes squealing all around the village. Um, the first time I met Mark, I squealed all the way home um, because I just knew. Simple as that. I think at 42, I think at 42, if you don't know at 42 what mm. you want, I think then you need to get a life and sort yourself out. So, um, but yeah, I rang, a, I rang Mary, a friend of mine, and um, I think everybody knew, you know, except Mark at the time. Really. Well. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. When I did ask her if she would marry me, um, she said, well, I said, will you get married next, how about get married next Christmas? And she said, no. That's too long to wait. Yeah, I'm 42. Um, so it wasn't about children as much as it was like, I've got a life. And I, <laughs> <laughs> there's not much left of it. So yeah, why wait till Christmas? So we got married on Easter Day. Mm. In, and I was a workaholic and I still work hard. Um, the staff here clearly work hard. I've only been here a week. I see that. I was a workaholic, so we got married um, in the third service on a Sunday on Easter Day. I led the first two, <laughs> went back to the office. Somebody bought me breakfast, a McDonald's breakfast, and, um, and hair done in my office, and we had half an hour to get sorted ready for the wedding, and um, that was it. So, well, it's practical, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds good. Mm. <laughs> if you ever suggest a second service, we know what to expect. <laughs> There we go. So, Mark, so we made a bit of a joke at the start, but you've you're obviously got an important role supporting Helen um, in her ministry. You were at the interview. You're completely behind what she's trying to do, but you have a life too. So just let us know what you do during the week. What will you be doing tomorrow? Uh, so I'm a, I'm a teacher. Um, I teach engineering at Cadbury College. Um, and we're starting a new course, so I'll be teaching some electronics as well, which is great to get back to um, from September. Mm -hmm. uh, Monday will be my second year, so trying to get them finished. Now, I know, I know what this lot are like. So I know a lot of people didn't hear anything apart from Cadbury. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably right. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, so just, just fill us in on the freebies. Well, when I started, we used to get chocolate in meetings. But after COVID, that never came back, sadly. My mum thinks that I work for Cadbury Chocolate yeah. and that I teach there. I'm not quite sure who she imagines I teach. Yeah. Lots of Freddos. Used to come home with lots of Freddos. Knew it was a staff meeting if there were Freddos in there. Yeah, house. Freddo Frogs. That, that, yeah. that won my heart over, really. Yeah. It's a nice place to work, to be fair. I, I like it. Yeah. So, what do you consider to be your ministry, like your front lines and your everyday life? What, uh, apart from, as we said, being a pastor's wife, what are, what are your things? Yeah, well, that's, that's fair. Um, so, um, I, I, like it or not, I am, I am a role model. Um, I try to example um, and, and behave properly and appropriately, and uh, I get to... Whether they like it or not, I get to pray for all my students. Um, and, uh, yeah, so they, they are my front line, really. Um, and, and our girls, of course. Yeah. And no. he makes great bread. So, uh, you know, the classic traditional pastor's wife, you know, flower arranging, he's much better than that, at that than me. Uh, makes bread, pizzas in particular. Oh, okay. He's a much better cook than me, although he's not very practical cook. He's the special day cook. Um, it's a classic barbecue thing, isn't it? And Applied chemistry. Thing. So, um, yeah, there's loads. And I think on a church level as well, you know, he's, 
He just loves being around people, don't you? I'm answering questions for him now. I'm sorry. Didn't I, take I, long, did it? I like to think I can encourage people. Yeah, and real encourager of the kids as well in, at school. So. And I know we say pastor's wife is a joke, but do you have a title that you like to use? I quite like pastor's wife. I think okay. <laughs> Mark right, we're going. With, you, you're not. You're not getting rid of that now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Helen, have you always been a Christian? Mm-hmm. I, that's a question. Lots of people answer as yes. I've always been a Christian. No, I haven't. Uh, I don't think you can always be a Christian because it's a personal decision that you make as a youngster mm. or whenever you you meet with Jesus. And um, I, I became a Christian when I was seven in the church where we just come from. Ironically, I kind of did full circle. My parents, grandparents were founder members at Oldby Church. Um, so it was weird going back there after 30 years. It, a little bit like this after 23, to be honest. I seem to be on this cycle. But, um, uh, so I became a Christian in a broom cupboard with Julie Andrews. Uh, there's a weird thing. She was a Sunday school teacher. And back then we had kids everywhere. And so a seven-year-old, um, her name was Julie Andrews. We were in a little cupboard somewhere in the church that later became my office. Um, so big, big, uh, big moment for me at seven. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. The hills are alive to the sound of Jesus. Is that what she used to say? <laughs> yeah. So um, it was a personal decision, personal yeah. decision you made in your broom cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> and did you decide at that moment, I want to be a pastor? No, but I remember at thir- about 12, we were sending out missionaries to Sierra Leone, a couple called Tim and Kerry, And I was only a youngster, and I had no idea where Sierra Leone was in Africa. Um, But I felt, even at a young age, that will be, God say to me, that will be you one day. Not that I'd be going to Sierra Leone, but that the church or a church would be sending me out to work in some form of full-time ministry. So even at a young age, I think I I knew that there's something. I didn't really, I went off the rails a little bit in my late teens and um, ended up working for NatWest Bank. For a while, one, yeah, it was that off the rails that bit was it? Um, but I didn't know exactly what it was, and I didn't want to do more studies. I got sick of A levels and messing. I failed my RE. There's a classic, isn't it? Um, and and so I really wasn't sure. So I got a job while I waited, and God opened up doors. And my pastor said, "Have you thought about college?" I I wanted to be a teacher, as I said. I failed some A levels. Um, and uh, I'd been on mission as well to Yugoslavia during the war. We'd taken a load of aid out there as a, I was 21, I think, at the time, and all of that was feeding into this sense that God was asking me to do something in a full-time capacity. Um, didn't always want to be a pastor back then. I didn't realise you could be a pastor. It was very different landscape. Women, you know, you could mm. be a pastor's wife. Um, you did the flowers. You could teach the children. You could go out to mission on mission. Um, so I kind of thought my options were a bit limited, but um, thankfully things have changed an awful lot. And um, and I went to Bible college for three or four four years, um, and obviously um, during that time, um, God really spoke to me, me about being a pastor of a church, really, and and that's what brought me to Stafford the first time. Yeah. And then we sent you to Russia. Yes, I like variety. Yeah, with Bre- with Brenda. It's nice to yeah, see Brenda here Brenda, and, yeah. and others, yeah. And Duncan came and Trevor, the four of us musketeers went out there, didn't we? Yeah, so Russia, yeah, I love variety. Um, I, I like cleaning, uh, spinning plates, really. I, I love the variety of the work that I do, um, whether the all-age kind of thing. I love baptisms. If it was left to me, I would have baptisms every single Sunday. Um, <laughs> Uh, everywhere I go, I pray that the baptism tank, if you like, is open more than it is. Hopefully, you know, monthly, weekly, whatever, rather than just once or twice a year. Um, I love the whole thing about the sh- church shop windows. This is mm. a shop window. We need to look out for that and look after that. Um, and uh, you are sh- all individual shop windows. So I, I love uh, journeying with people, the whole discipleship kind of thing. Um, I love the whole Russia thing. I've just worked in Russia now on and off, um, as you see some pictures actually, with drug rehabilitation and addiction um, over my whole time after I left here in 2000. For 13 years, I was back and forth to Russia, sometimes four times a year, um, and uh, working, with, taking um, training to uh, rehab centres, Christian rehab centres, 
um, and training them on in HIV, teamwork, and obviously Christian lifestyle principles as well. Um, so that was a, a great variation in my, in my week. Really. So you've done a huge variety of things. Yeah. If you like baptisms, if we have another thunderstorm, if everyone just queues at the storeroom in Covenant Hall, uh, we could, uh, with the hole in the roof, we could probably do baptisms every 10 minutes. But uh, we're working on that. But in the huge variety of things that you've done, what's been the favourite thing? What sticks out for you? Oh, I don't know. I love Alpha. I love watching the penny drop in people's mm. lives, you know, that journey towards Jesus. And those early years in particular, I love watching the penny drop. Um, I, I love working with the... the we did a, um, an outreach to the street girls, the sex workers in Coventry, and um, I love journeying with them. Uh, you know, girls that would come to the back of the car, we'd give them a drink and some food. And, and I remember one, girls, one of the girls said, um, well, we'd just stand there at the back of the car, we'd talk to them, make them a drink. And this one girl, one of her clients, you know what I'm saying, adults, one of her clients came around at the corner and she said, I've got to go, I've got to go. Uh, she wanted us to pray with her. She said, I've got to go, I've got to go. So she legged it. We put the boot down. We were about to get back in the car. She comes back around the corner. She says, I've told him to wait. And um, so, you know, I love that, that newness. Those of you who are in pastoral ministry out on the streets and the street pastor, I love being out there as well as journeying this with you. And um, so that variety is just fab. I, it's difficult to say one thing, but um, it's all of that that keeps me uh, alive in my faith really does that's fantastic now people don't want to listen to me all the time so i've got some helpers who are going to come and ask their questions ali and lizzie do you want to come first ali's question is who do you love and why who do we love and why oh my goodness well tina turner no no um we love our daughters phoebe and becky they're great um i love my dog does that answer your question I love Jesus. That's always the answer, really, that you're looking for, isn't it? Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Is that, a, is that... Who do you love? Who do you love? Mommy. Tell me. Oh. Any, have you got a question as well? Uh, no. Uh, Elsie, do you want to come and join me? And Josh? Come on, Elsie. You'll do a great job. I apologise for people as I move around, because I make a rubbish window. So, if I'm blocking your view, I apologise. Do you like swimming or the stars? Um, yeah, so I, I was, um, I swam in almost national teams when I was 14. Um, some of you might remember um, Adrian Morehouse from the TV. He won a gold medal in 1988. He was always faster than me. But we were in the same club, almost in the same squads. And what about stars? Do you like stars? Stars. Oh, I, I love, yeah, I love astronomy. It's brilliant. Needlessly yeah. beautiful. Rachel has turned into Lauren. <laughs> Thank you. Rachel's got a great question, but she didn't want to come up. Um, she says, do you have any plans for joining up with other churches in Stafford? I, I think it's really important that we, we uh, realise that there's some great churches in Stafford and yeah. we are the best, obviously. <laughs> um, but there's some great churches in Stafford and all uh, throughout uh, my time in ministry, it's, it's been such an important part of connecting with other Christians around the town um, and celebrating what they're doing uh, and what we're achieving for the good kingdom of God together we're all on the same team aren't we um, and we're yeah. on the same side so uh, definitely connecting with other churches if that answers your question yeah. Hannah just like a mother Hannah's very shy uh, and doesn't want to answer, ask the question because you might bite if you've had your breakfast uh, okay she won't bite it's okay so unfortunately Helen Hannah loves Stoke City uh -huh. she eats sleeps, breathes football. Yeah, she was good. also almost a national swimmer at the uh, age of 10, yeah. but COVID hit. But her question is, what sport do you like mm. doing, watching, etc.? Mm. Okay. 
sport. I, I like I like watching rugby. I've always loved rugby, the international side of things, um, and that. But I have to say, I haven't played lately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a long distance runner. I'll never be in the Ironman um, at sport. We like Wimbledon. Watch Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did try and we joined a club recently, but my knees won't hack that, so never mind. And motorsport too. I followed that quite a lot. Yeah. I used to work at Silverstone Racetrack. Teacher. Not driving. Hey kids, the lessons used to get disrupted because the track racing went on, so they had to stop their lessons. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Stop lessons, watch the speed of the cars. Brilliant. Thank you. That was the excuse, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Now, you didn't mention West Brom in that. Well, football, West Brom, yeah. It's Man City, though, this weekend, really. Uh, yeah, I know, I know it's Karen, Karen's got her shirt on. Karen, no one's impressed. No one's impressed, Karen. Oh, lovely. However, two people have got Villa shirts on, and I'm very impressed. Very so, good. Champions League next year. That's what we want. Right. Now, <clears throat> Mark, some, some folks will often tell people wrongly that if you come to Jesus, all your problems disappear and everything's fine. Um, but actually, what he does promise is that he'll be with you through all the problems and the difficulties. Um, just talk us through perhaps any difficulties, problems in your life that you've had to walk through with, with Jesus and how that's, how that's gone, how you've experienced that. Um, I, uh, my, my life certainly hasn't been a bed of roses um, by any means. But as you said, you, you never really feel like you're on your own. Um, I, I've, I mean, I've been divorced. I've been off work sick long periods um it's it there, there have been very dark times in my life um but uh and i think a lot of my i i try to deal with it myself i try to solve problems i and what i've learned really is that you can't really do things in your own strength you need to be what you've been made to do but you um you need, you need Jesus there with you. Mm. And um, that, that certainly was my rekindling of my, uh, my faith really recently was, was hearing that voice calling me home. And you, and you both have had life's quota of ups and downs, yeah. probably more than your quota. How, uh, how have you stayed Christians? Why have you <laughs> stayed Christians through all that? Um, Who'd want to do this without him? I think that's oh, the, I the conclusion you come to, isn't it? How do people cope without mm. that extra pair of shoulders that we find in, in God to help us through mm. and guide us through? I think, you know, uh, nowadays the doubts blow in. They still, I still have certain doubts at times, not many, but there are moments I doubt my own ability to follow Jesus as well as I should. Um, not in his, his existence or not in his ability and not in his love for me um but there are moments i just you know have those but they crash in and then they crash out these doubts or these flickers of and i think they they become less if you don't somebody said if you if you don't doubt you must be dead you know you, you know so there are times when we do have our moments but i think um the, the curveballs the life that life throws at you i wouldn't want to face some of those without god and i think right. it's not a dependency is it in that respect it's not that you know, people say, oh, if you're a Christian, you're weak. Not at all. I think you have to be really strong to be a Christian. Um, you have to say far more no's, don't you, <laughs> to be a Christian. Because yeah. anything goes if you're not, and um, often. Um, but there's so many God coincidences along the way. I, you can't dispute the fact that, no. that he's there. And so I think, you know, it's just so important. I mean, to, even yesterday. Yeah, we broke down yesterday. We broke down with the car. We were driving to Cardiff. Um, the lights on the car started flashing away like a Christmas tree uh, and we needed to stop and we were in a position where we could. Yeah. Coincidence, of course. No. Um, we could come off the motorway straight away. Yeah. We, weren't, we weren't out in the far lane. It, yeah. we, we didn't lose a wheel or a tyre or 
Yeah. Uh, coincidence, of course. And coincidentally, I think it's a god incident. There was a little pub right next door to where we start. <laughs> So for four hours or five hours, we weren't waiting in the heat. And it's all those little things. You yeah, can yeah. either get angry about it or you can say, well, God, you know what you're doing here. And that was a, that was a God job. And he can make even a curveball into a, a God moment. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, all those things, really. Why wouldn't you stay a Christian when you see the change and transformation in people that you can be a part of? Yeah. Uh, as well as see your own progress and growth. Uh, in, in your own life, yeah. That's great. Is there a Bible verse that you keep coming back to, Helen? Oh, yeah. I've, I've asked the guys to put it on screen, actually, because it's a bit long. Um, the next one, we'll mention the cabin in a little minute, but it's from Romans, Romans 12. Yeah. Um, could you just drop it on screen for me? Here you go. It says, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. It's the message version. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work life, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Don't let the world shape you into its own mould, I think one version says. Um, uh, it says, instead fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognise what he wants from you and, and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out in you. So it develops well-formed maturity in you. It's a weird and long way of putting what the original text says, but I love that version. And mm. I love the fact that God takes our ordinary, everyday lives and uses them in the simplest of ways as we're just out there doing our, our day. I just love that. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, when you, you told us about getting married, very organized and oh, oh gosh, efficient yeah. wedding, but also on that day, you became a stepmom yeah. to Becky and Phoebe, yeah. Mark, your daughters. Just uh, why don't you tell us a bit, a little bit about them, about family life and step parenting? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, when I first met Mark, obviously, um, at 42, I think you get to the point where you realise that um, chances are you're going to meet somebody who's very stuck at home. Um, or chances are you might find a, a fellow that has got a family already. And I think God prepared me for the family a bit, uh, but he didn't prepare me for the dog bit at all. Wasn't really into dogs at all. And so when I met this dog, I met the girls, and something in me just, I loved them from the word go. I can't explain it, um, but they were just, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but the dog, I saw him and I thought, oh great, he's grey, he'll be dead soon. I always thought she meant me. <laughs> um, and, I, and the rea reality is I wasn't a dog lover at all. I'm not into dogs. And I'm thinking, how am I going to deal with a dog and a and job and, and children and all that? And I said, so how old is the dog? And he said, three. <laughs> so <laughs> sadly, he, he passed away just a, a, a year or so ago. But honestly, God has been through the whole thing with, with us all. Um, the girls were 10 and 12 when I first met them. Uh, everybody was saying, oh, they were about to hit their teenage years. Do you know something? You know, if it's a God job, you just work this forward, don't you, as a family? Mm. And um, they were into scooters and Disney and H2O and, and horses and doggies and, and everything else. And I was just out there with the street workers. And, and this was a very different uh, aspect of life to me. Um, watching Merlin and Strictly come dancing mm. on a Saturday night and and all of that so but from the start we felt it really important that we included the girls in obviously they have a mum uh, elsewhere and lived in the same village as us so we have felt that we had to stay in the same village to make sure that we could be a part of their lives and that in particular mark's relationship could stay really good with them uh, it wasn't easy it was a juggle on our facebook page like yours you see the headlines of our lives don't you You see the kind of newsreel the bit everybody want you you know wants you to see but there were difficult times at times. Often I was always the third voice, not the first or the second voice in the mix. And I had to stand back at times and let that, that work its way through. Uh, but the girls were really great. We took them on honeymoon with us from the very start. Um, you know, so it, they were included from the word go. And we felt that that really did stand, stand us in some good stead. Mm. So for six years, both of us worked uh, not in the village where we were living, 
I uh, travelled a 120 mile round trip to the church in Albury for six years. Mark was going to Silverstone for uh, a 50 mile round trip. So the girls were a priority. People say mission and ministry should be first. Yeah. No, God's first, family second. Family is our ministry. Um, first of all, our marriage and our family. And the, the, the church, bless you, is, is just a little bit lower than that. But if we get everything else right, everything falls into place. Um, so, yeah, it was a family juggle. I didn't want the kids being latchkey kids. I, it just wasn't something I, I personally wanted. I wanted to be there when they were home on the days we had them. It was really hard, the handover days, if you're a blended family. I'm not so sure how blended we are at some points. But nonetheless, it was heartbreaking when we had to hand them back over every Friday night to their mum. And, uh, and, you know, there's lots of different mixes in the mix it's yeah. hard enough when they play mom and dad off each other, isn't it? But sometimes they play mom, dad, and, you know, from households off. It's very, uh, very interesting. But they were really, really great, the way they handled it all. Um, and they, they're now in their 20s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it worked. You know, yeah. We gave them the stability they needed when they needed it. Yeah. I mean, the girls now, I think, recognise the, the job we were able to do. And, um, uh, you know, I was able to go into Albury Church at the time and, and the flexibility of the church meant that I was able to, to, to be home on certain days when we had the girls um, and then and work from home on those days. Um, so that was, that was really, really helpful. Mm. They now see the, the con- I think they see the continuity that we brought to their lives. They've just finished degrees in Cardiff and Plymouth um, and are looking for jobs and I think Phoebe's about to join home come back home for a little season while she does that uh, phoebe's the one with the rucksack on don't know whether you can see her but uh, and becky has a, a boyfriend down in london now our time is gone yeah. but did you want to say something about the cabin did you have something up? one of the things we do do um one of the thing, things we felt god asked us to do where we're living at the moment is um there was a spot where we could have either built a big garage or we could have built a, a cabin and so this is a ministry that we, we have. God, we felt God just simply say, help the helpers. Dead, dead simple. And so for people in ministry, people who are studying uh, in, in college, at our Bible college, for folks that are, are working for certain charities that we support, we just simply say, look, come and have two or three days out. Come and breathe uh, and just, just be. And there's a lovely view over a field. And, um, and they can just come. Um, and just on a retreat day or a couple of days break and so that's what we uh, facilitate really from where we're based at the moment so it's called the cabin and uh, our hope is to help the helpers to keep people going yeah. keep them going but to encourage them to breathe in as well as just breathing out all the time in their respective ministries so people come for a day people come for two or three days we send a say maximum stay of uh, like three nights um, and they just take a break, take a break for free. Yeah. So as we finish, um, just tell me about an encounter moment with God you'll never forget. I was on a plane uh, flying across Russia in the dark, uh, and it was one of those trips where everything went wrong. Oh, I love and it was story. minus 50 um, outside, and we'd been already been thrown off the Trans-Siberian Express, um, or tried to, and it was freezing cold. But we're in a plane, and I said, God, if you are in this, you've got to show me, because I don't know whether I can get to the end of this trip. We do nine flights and train journeys all over the place. And um, as I looked outside this window, a star, going back to the star question, a star shot past the plane. There was nothing outside. If you crossed a Russia and Siberia, it's just black. And this star shot past the... And I thought, ooh... I says, well, if that's you, God, do it again, because I did, I doubted it. And, you know, there was another star wow. at just that moment. And I, I know it sounds a, b- a bit bizarre, but the timing of that was incredible. And, and I kind of just thought, man, that's just for me, that. Um, so that was one of my little b- big encounter mo- mm. moments over the years. And, you know, that trip produced so much fruit at the end of it. And we did survive it. We're here to tell the tale. But I just needed something from God to say you're okay we're going to get you through this and we will get you home and you know my work will be done and 
and that was one of those encounter moments. But they're every day, aren't they? Yeah. And on and off, little things as you go. And just finally, give me one word that you'd use to describe God in your last season, the one that's just come before this new one. <laughs> um, provider, I think. He's, he's, he's given us everything we've needed. Not necessarily what we wanted, but everything we've needed, he's provided for. Mm. Whether it's been the support, whether it's been people, whether it's been finance, whether it's been strength. When we bought our new house, a river basically suddenly ran through when it rained and they had lied on the, the documentation when we bought it. So we've had to do a lot of work with the house that we didn't anticipate having to do because of flooding and all sorts of things. And, and God's provided us the strength and the ability, the people, the wisdom to do it. Um, and so, yeah, provider in every sense, um, when it comes to strength, finance, home, love, family, yeah, provider. Great. And as the worship group join us, Mark, have you got, got a word? Yeah, faithful. Faithful is, is, is my thought, really. And that he'd want me to be part of his story seems incredible. Okay. Well, Helen and Mark... Nothing else you want to tell about? You've grilled us sufficiently. It's, it's fantastic having you with us. We hope that folks know you a bit better. We look forward to what is ahead. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, and uh, just thank you, for, thank you for joining us. Thanks, James. Okay. Thank you.